Alright you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we're going to be looking at the great KTO. Now I'm not actually sure, I haven't put a face to a name, but I just came across this YouTube channel before. We watched the ugliest man in NFL history, which was Jack Lambert. A video I had wanted to see for so fucking long and finally did. Now, the next one that I've wanted to see for probably two months, probably as long as it's been out. The dirtiest player ever. Meet the dirtiest player in NFL history. Okay? I don't know what his name is. I don't know what he looks like. But if it's this guy, I'll be surprised. I doubt whether it is. But let's find out, guys. Let's find out who the dirtiest player in NFL history is. This video is brought to you by SeatGeek. SeatGeek puts tickets from all across the Seat way Geek. to one area and puts them on a 1 to 100 scale so you know you're getting a good deal. If you haven't used the app yet, use my promo code KTO for $20 off your first purchase. I gotta thank SeatGeek for sponsoring this video and now let's dive into this story. Thanks, SeatGeek. Recently, I stumbled onto Reddit and found a thread titled Most Disrespectful and Humiliating Plays in NFL History. And the author of the thread had already listed some examples. Adrian Peterson running over William Gay. This dude getting stiff-armed by Russell Wilson. And Dante Hall with possibly the nastiest Bang! juke of all time. <laughs> yeah, These are disrespectful that was so and nice. humiliating, sure. But if you want to talk about acts that are more than just big hits or sick jukes, I'm talking cheap shots. Or worse, just oh, complete dark. What the fuck? You slowly make your way to story after story involving Bill Romanowski. Bill Romanowski. Oh my life on the edge. Romanowski writes about a playoff game against the Giants, where he found himself buried with running back Dave Meggett. I'm pissed, and I'm down there just trying to rip that ball out of his hands, and all I could get was a finger, and. At that time, I thought it was his, but just whatever it was, just <laughs> I just snapped it, and I could hear a scream at the bottom of the pile. You broke his finger, and you thought to yourself, "Good, he's not going to be so effective anymore." At that time, yes. Man, that's cold. That's awful. That's fucked up, man. <laughs> football in the National Football, they're going to pay millions of dollars. Pay me a stick of bubble gum. Cut off my arm right now, I'm in. Go, I'm in. Count me in, I'm going. I, I wouldn't have expected him to be... Bill Romanowski was fresh out of Boston. That kind of guy. A storied four-year career. And the 49ers took him in the third round of the 1988 NFL Draft. This ESPN article titled Cracked Code went into investigating what started turning Romo into the monster he became. And he mentioned this story while going through his rookie season. During a game against Oakland, Ethan Horton pushed Romanowski in the back and the young linebacker didn't retaliate. The next day at a film session, future Hall of Fame safety Ronnie Lott shut off the projector, turned on the lights, and punked Romanowski for allowing himself to get punked. This is a game about respect, Lott said. If you let someone do that again, I'll come after you myself. Ronnie Lott, the man who got his finger amputated so he could keep playing, when he gives you advice, at least in the world of professional football, you listen. And Romo took this to heart. That team won two Super Bowls by his third season. But people started to become aware of... So I'm assuming he got pushed by Ronnie Lott self to get pumped. This is a game about respect, Blot said. If you let someone do that If you let someone do that to you again, like push you in the back, I'll come after you myself. Okay. Again, I'll come after you. You gotta be ruthless. Myself. Ronnie Lott, the man who got his finger amputated so he could keep playing, when he gives you advice, at least in the world of professional football, you listen. And Romo took this to heart. That team won two Super Bowls by his third season. But people started to become aware of how he developed his game. He played with a style that made people hate him. He was the kind of guy who couldn't turn off the intensity, even in practice. You broke an unwritten rule, probably an unwritten rule of the entire NFL. You hit Jerry Rice as hard as you possibly could. In practice, your own teammate. That, that one on 
was an accident. That was one where I was engaged with a blocker. He came around on a reverse. I came off the blocker, stuck my arm out, and boom, nailed, nailed Jerry right to the ground. You ended up getting in a fight with him. He came out. This man did not care who you were. <laughs> who is this guy? You. Who is this guy, man? There was this weird time in Romo's career that would get overlooked if it wasn't for a single incident. He played for the Eagles for two seasons. And in the midst of his second year, Romo was ejected from a game for kicking an opponent five times in the head. This was the first major incident that began shaping his legacy. Two years later, in a preseason game, he shattered the jaw of quarterback Kerry Collins. That cost him a $20,000 fine. Fuck. Just weeks later, drunk quarterback Kerry's legacy. Two years later, in a preseason game, he shattered the jaw oh, of quarterback Jesus, Kerry Collins. Man. That cost uh. him a $20,000 fine. Just weeks later, Romanowski would become one of the most hated players in the league after this happened on national television. Whoa. Monday Night Football. Oh my God, what happened? J.J. Stokes, I think, talking to Bill Romanowski. Ooh, there is a, a real lack of social graces on the part of Romanowski. This was crossing the line. This was something that even his own team, uh, Shannon Sharp, yeah. did not take too kindly. I was upset at Romanowski, not because he was white and spent a black guy's face, because he disrespected another man. And I couldn't condone what he did simply because he was my teammate. If my brother's wrong, he's wrong. I'm mad enough to tell him he's wrong. And that's what I did. I was mad enough to tell Bill Romanowski. He was wrong. These two got over their differences and were critical pieces in two Super Bowl victories. The show Undisputed has even brought Romo on as a guest a few times. On Fuck it, I was going to say, four-time Super Bowl champion. Holy shit, man. Featured on, him and Shannon talked about how they overcame their differences to win a Super Bowl. They came together as a team. And at the end of the day, Romo was a great teammate. As the old quote goes, you love him when he's on your side, but you hate his guts when you gotta go against him. Shannon learned this lesson all too well when Romo moved on to play for Oakland. That's when they had to go head to head. He fucking broke his arm. Wait, I just watched that. I was like, What is he doing to his arm? And it looks like we're about to find out. I don't want to watch this shit. Ah, oh, man, nah! The fact that they had to pump this over and over again. Ah, fuck off! You clearly see that he poked Shannon's arm. Luckily, he didn't break it, but it still dislocated his elbow. From 1995 to 2002, the list of fines and- Fuck! Oh my god, look at this shit! Oh my gosh, man! Altercations that I've been a part of is a... staggering. So here's another interview from a few years back that's from Colin Coward's show. And this is what I found incredibly weird. Romo starts to explain this concept. You know, tell the guys he's a uh, something a-hole and an hour later an hour, you're hour later you, you're having a beer and you kind of move on you know and that's the one thing about uh the locker room that's really special is to be able to do that some guys hang on to, sure. on to it some do but for me i didn't hang on to it because i was usually the one dishing it out and right. i and i would feel badly about it and then i had no problem apologizing he at least sounds self-conscious enough to understand what he's done so he seems to sound normal, but that quickly goes away with the next thing he says. I remember when I uh, threw uh, a microwave oven at Dexter Carter, you know, uh, and then jacked him up against a Coke machine. And, you know, I, I ripped off his gold chain and... And the reason that he threw the microwave? We had an old microwave yeah. that literally took like two minutes to heat a sandwich yeah. but if you put another one in there it took like 20 <laughs> and he, he tried to add his sandwich to mine how dare he do Dexter, that Dexter what are you doing you don't do it he's fucking mad this last incident is truly the cherry on top of this man's career you would think a lot of his problems came from roid rage in fact 
he didn't start taking steroids until 2001. His first 13 years in the league, that was all him. Now imagine how crazy he was, plus the roid rage. This is I don't want to imagine that. During training camp in 2003, a fight between Marcus Williams and Bill Romanowski sent shockwaves throughout the league. Here's what happened. Williams blocked Romanowski. Romanowski grabbed Williams by the neck of his jersey. Williams disengaged, and then he raised his arms as if to say, it's over. But it wasn't. Romanowski stepped towards Williams and grabbed his face mask. Williams grabbed back before quickly letting go. But Romanowski continued pushing on Williams' helmet, so violently that his head jerked back. As Williams' helmet flew off and his head recoiled forward, Romanowski's right fist smashed into his face. The 6'4", 250-pound Williams fell onto the ground unconscious. His left eye socket shattered. A tooth chipped. He came to within seconds, felt blood on his cheek, and saw Romanowski standing over him, shouting, Don't ever effing hold me. This was Williams' face after the incident. That punch resulted in a broken eye socket, concussion, double vision, depression, and memory issues. This also ended his career, and he eventually sued Romanowski for battery, negligence, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Ultimately, in the end, he won the case. Call him crazy, a psycho, or if you're old school, a hard-nosed football player. Whatever you want to call him. At the end of the day, Bill Romanowski is one of the last people you'd ever want to run into when he's pissed off. The Fuck! Get him, Romanowski! Yeah! Holy cow, he just ran right over! Look at the big Bill, oh yeah, that's me, I hit him. Oh man! Romanowski getting hit. You know what? The one thing, the one thing I want to see after watching that is someone stand up to Bill fucking Romanowski and give him something. NFL career ending injuries. Do I really want to watch that? NFL's most bizarre one year wonder. Fuck, oh, this, guy's, this guy's on point, KTO, I want to say, man, good, awesome videos, great thumbnails, very intriguing, and I'll probably get into that one next. But in the meantime, guys, we're going to call it a day. If you have enjoyed this one, please press like. If you want to subscribe, please do. And uh, that was Bill Romanowski, the most ruthless guy. No, what was it? The, what was it called? The dirtiest player in NFL history. And that is exactly right, that's what he was. Why didn't someone else punch him, seriously? <sighs> they needed frickin' Christian Okoye or some shit. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> You know? Ah, <sighs> oh, well, next time. Peace out, everybody.